I want to I want to talk about what happened with Adam Toledo. Uh, we 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 have the footage now, and I wanted uh, before we look at the footage itself because the footage itself is ridiculous, and I want to show you how uh, a network like NBC is covering this story and what what was hidden and how they're kind of spinning to make Lori Lightfoot look good in this situation, which she is not, by the way. Um, after the murder of Adam Toledo, the Chicago Police Department tried to cover it up. Uh, and they claimed, well, he had a gun pointing at the cops. Uh, they felt threatened by him. You know, he was waving a gun. Uh, I believe, let me see, something else that I... Oh, uh, Chicago Tribune specifically painted him as a hardened gang member. Kid's 13. Um, you know, what fucking uh, weird dark horse comic book, you know, plot line are you fucking snagging to, to write your stories? 13-year-old kid is a hardened gang member. Do you know how fucked up somebody's life has to be that by 13 you're a hardened gang member? What are you talking about? What an insane thing to fucking insinuate. Uh, there's details coming out, you know, that that there, he might have had an airsoft gun. Uh, and, you know, like what people heard, they called in because they heard, they called the cops because they heard a gunshot. And what they might have heard was the, was the airsoft gun. But Mayor Lightfoot d turned a story about gun violence. Because, again, it supports that narrative of, well, he had a gun pointed at the cops. Well, none of that was true. Uh, oh, and then on, on Tuesday, she closed the bridge, uh, which she did last year as well, to prevent protests, prevent any sort of marches from going forward. So a lot of this stuff is like, you're, you're doing shit that makes you look guilty. And then when the when the the footage came out where it was literally him hands up unarmed like he complied with the cop and the cop just showed up on the stream and pop 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 like and and then i guess they tried to do chest compressions so nbc and i'll i'll i'll, I'll show you the clip here in just a second does frame it as though the cops are the good guys in the situation that and and frames it in a light that they tried to help adam toledo so let's go to that now let's do that now I want to show you share audio. So this is the NBC reporting here. And if you can't hear this, please let me know. I'm going to kick the volume back up. This volume went down on that. That's exactly what it is. Um, the shooting transpired really what, what strikes you most when you first watch it is that this happened in just a matter of seconds, in under 20 seconds. You see the officer step out of his car, uh, pursue Adam Toledo down an alleyway. Uh, Adam slows down against a fence, sort of turns toward the officer as he makes commands for Adam to put his hands up in the air. And the shooting happens uh, faster, frankly, than you can, can process the scene. So they pause the video. They don't show the shooting. Uh, probably because I think it looks like this, this, this might be because of Copa because he's younger. Uh, but they don't, you know, they don't, they don't show the shooting. They kind of pause Some it right there. Some people expected that it would be clear that Adam had a gun in his hand, that he had used it or was planning to use it. That is not clear from the video that we've been in, able to watch just in these last couple minutes. Uh, you sort of see him turn toward and listen to the officer. And uh, sort of within the blink of an eye, he shot, collapses to the ground. And then most of the video uh, of the body cam video worn by the officer involved in the shooting is officers trying to save Adam Toledo's life. So the shooting happens in a matter of seconds, and then most of it is the attempt to do CPR, people asking him stay with them if he can hear them, and you do not hear any signs of life uh, from this 13-year-old boy, and it is painful to watch the video. So, again, they've kind of framed it as, oh, well, most of it is them trying to help him. There's only, uh, don't worry about that small little part where they fire a bunch of bullets into his chest and, and, and murder him, but they tried to help him. Did you guys see how they're... See, that's protecting and serving, because after they shoot you in the chest, they they do CPR. Hmm? 
where's that to fund the police? They wouldn't if you if the if you defunded the police, they wouldn't be able to do the chest compressions. Pretty cool, these cops. Pretty nice. This is this is by the way the Joe Biden argument. This would be the defund the police argument, a, a, a la Joe Biden. Is shoot them in the leg, right? Or actually, if you shoot them through the heart, do some chest compressions and tell them that you want him to stay with you. This is empathetic policing, according to Crime Bill Joe. We are watching the trial of, like, one of the most iconic cop, uh, killer cops. And in a, in a span of a week, we've had Dante Wright and Adam Toledo. One of them, 14 miles. Is it 14 or 4? Uh, very close to where the trial of Derek Chauvin is taking place. And in both instances, you see the cops panic. And in both instances, it shows you exactly what cops are trained to do. Dante Wright, Kimberly Potter thought her handgun was a taser. Two very different things. And there was surprise in what she did, but you still killed the kid. Because what are you trained to do? You are trained to go for your gun first. And you automatically fucking, that's what you did. That's what you did. You went for your gun first because psychologically, that's what the police uh, training shows you to do. It's not about de-escalation. It's about making sure that you shoot first and ask questions later, especially if somebody's black. Because if they're black, then they're doubly scary. If they're brown, they're just about as equally scary as black people. If they're white and they've already said that they have a gun and are flashing the gun and already murdered a bunch of people you take them to burger king well they might be hungry you know firing a guy it's a lot of work and they killed so many people their adrenaline is going up you know you want to make sure that they're okay when you interrogate them that's it, it this just shows the systemic racism within the police departments and in this what happens they ran up Kid's got his hands in the air. No weapons. Pop, pop, pop. Instinctually shot this black kid. And I know there's going to be a bunch of assholes. Oh, why did he run? If he was innocent, why did he run? What do you think you're going to do when the cops show up and the cops have a record of killing innocent black people across this country? Dude, if a random cop shows up when I'm fucking on my front porch and I don't know that they're going to show up, I'm booking it inside. Two years ago, I almost saw a, a black couple get shot in front of my house. I had a, a, a friend of mine that was um, coming over. I, I toured with this with this cat. This is 2018. So maybe three years ago. Uh, years are weird. Um yeah, so he was coming over to stay, you know, because he was torn through, uh, and uh, I he had texted me that he was on his way, and I was married at the time. My wife at the time goes, hey, tell Andrew uh, that he can't park on our street right now. I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, go downstairs, look outside. I go downstairs. They blocked off my street. And there's uh, six police cars, uh, all with their guns drawn out. There's an elderly black lady saying, it's okay, he's okay, he's not doing well. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to witness, I'm going to witness a fucking uh, murder by the police. So I, I kept watching it through my window, fucking terrified that if I go out there, I'm going to get shot. So I texted Andrew and I was like, don't park by the house. In fact, don't even come near the house. I'll let you know when it's safe. You know, I, I told him that there's a situation. 
fortunately, everything was taken care of. There was a couple other people that, you know, direct neighbors that came out, uh, white folks, uh, that said, hey, stop. This is making it worse. He's he's having a schizophrenic episode. You know, he he do, he's not aware of his surroundings right now. This is not helping. It's making it worse. And they were going to fucking shoot this dude. Eventually, they left. And the situation was handled. And the reason why the cops were called in the first place is somebody that isn't a regular in our neighborhood. And, you know, quite frankly, I didn't know what was going on. But if I saw a, a, a tough hole or if I heard something... I would talk to neighbors before I call the cops to be like, hey, is everything OK? Do you guys know what's going on here? I live down. The, you know, I wouldn't call the cops, but I could have fucking seen this dude get shot and killed. Easy. And had it not been for some fucking white folk that were like, hey, don't do this. Don't kill this cat. I, I would guarantee that they would have. Like riddled bullets, and then claimed that they were their life was in danger. And the only reason why they were called is because there was a quote domestic disturbance called in by someone that doesn't live in the neighborhood. And the husband had an episode, argued with the wife. The, the argument got loud, right? They that's just sort of their their process of working through it. Cops get called, things escalate, gets way worse. What they needed in that moment was not fucking six cop cars and at least 15 guns pointing at them what they needed was a mental health profession professional to come to the house and work through the episode and if they would have shot him and tried to do cpr nbc is trying to frame them as if they're fucking heroes Oh, they tried to save the kid that they fucking murdered. Here, I'll show you. This is a, this is a Lester Holt, my fucking favorite. Lester Holt. Let's listen Breaking to Breaking news this. from Chicago. Police video just released of a, a deadly one. officer involved shooting. This one involved a 13 year old boy. It happened late last month. We need to warn you the images are disturbing. Rahima Ellis is there. In the dramatic police body cam video, officers are responding to a call of shots fired in the early morning hours of March 29th in Chicago's Little Village neighborhood. In a matter of seconds, a pursuit Please turns stop. deadly. Stop! Listen to this. Hey, show me your head. Stop it! Stop it! Thirteen-year-old Adam Toledo was killed. Police say a gun was found at the scene. The officer screamed at him. Police say a gun was found at the scene. Independent media is reporting it as air airsoft gun. He had an he he had an airsoft gun that he dropped. That's the report that I've read. But here's the uh, attorney. Show me your hands for the family. Adam complied, turned around. His hands were empty when he was shot in the chest. So far, police have not released any information about the officer. Why they would they need to a not 21 do that? year old man who they say was with Toledo at the time. Sin, put oh. your hand behind your back. Oh. Reuben Roman, arraigned Saturday, was charged with child endangerment and reckless discharge of a firearm. Chicago's mayor became emotional today talking about the video. No parents should After ever have a video. After she covered it up. After she covered it up. They're saying she's getting emotional. You made this about gun violence. These are Democrats. They killed this kid. They killed Dante Wright. They killed Eric Garner, Mike Brown, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Antoine Rose. The, the, the list goes on. And you have politicians that cover it up for them. Why? Because cops protect their stuff. And now what you're seeing, and this is, you're, you're, we're, we're probably going to see a, a wave of this kind of shit. And it's probably because of the George Floyd trial, the Derek Chauvin trial. Uh, George Floyd isn't on trial, although the defense attorney, Eric Nelson, would have you try to believe that he was. Uh, how can you put a dead man on trial? 
Um, you're you're a sick, sad, gaslighting motherfucker if you think that you're going to put a dead person on trial. Uh, but that's what Eric Nelson is doing. You're justifying this murder. None of these mayors should be trusted unless they go, these cops need to be immediately fired and put into jail for blatantly fucking murdering somebody. So what do we need to do going forward, right? What's the what's the kind of lay of the land going forward? This is the ideal. I, I don't know if any of this stuff will actually happen. First of all, Derek Chauvin is guilty without a shadow of a doubt. Every single innocent verdict for killer cops should be overturned. The second that Derek Chauvin is found guilty, and if he is not found guilty, then there is no trust in the criminal justice system. That's it. Nobody can trust the criminal justice system going forward because it will prove that the criminal justice system is corrupt and broken. Once he's found guilty, once Derek Chauvin is found guilty, every verdict for killer cop should be overturned and qualified immunity should be revoked. I believe New Mexico did it. New York did it. Virginia started talking about it. Uh, at this point, there's no reason for qualified immunity to be in place because qualified immunity is a weapon to let sociopathic killer cops free to go and kill more innocent people of fucking color. Police budgets need to be hacked. More mental health and social programs need to be put into place. More community-based programs need to be put into place. Uh, better funding for schools and after-school programs so that, you know, if you have kids with two parents that work, awesome. They are taken care of at a place in the community where they can go and get help with homework, be around other kids, and, you know, be alive. Because if they're out on the streets, who knows? Some asshole fucking Raid Rage cop might come in and pop them two times for playing with a, with a, a Matchbox car. Uh-oh, Matchbox, that sounds aggressive. Again, if you, you, you listen to that video from NBC, the only person that was being aggressive was the cop. Put your fucking hands up. That's what he said. Put your fucking hands up. And when he complied, pop, pop, pop. And you fund Housing First initiatives. That's what needs to happen. Killer cops go away. Uproot the fucking police system. Fire all of the people that went through the training. You can become a fucking mall security guard for all I give a shit. There's plenty of other jobs you can do. You know where you can really work out that roid rage? Maybe in some construction projects. Don't be a cop, though. Because we're all fucking sick of seeing innocent dead kids and innocent dead black and brown people. And what we need is more pushback against the criminal justice system and against killer cops and against Democrats and Republicans that side with killer cops and actively fucking lie for them. We need, we need the working class to be in solidarity, push back against that shit. And we're already seeing it, right? This happened, uh, I was so excited when Pittsburgh did this over the last summer, but Minneapolis just did this where they, the Minneapolis transit workers are refusing to, uh, to, to uh, take arrested protesters down to jail. They won't do it. <clears throat> we need other industries to join in. Taxi cab drivers. Lift and Uber drivers. Get in solidarity with the transit workers. If cops are going to use their vehicles to kettle protesters, use your vehicles to kettle cops. Uh-oh, now you can't leave. Once you move your cars, protesters continue to march along their way, then you get to leave. We have to start protecting each other from the killer cops. Because I'll tell you that. 
I'll tell you what, if 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 this shit continues, there is going to be no trust in any form of law enforcement, period. So it's, so this course of action is high, highly counterproductive for the champions of capitalism that need cops to protect their shit. Realistically, the ideal is to uproot the system and rebuild. Build something new. Build something that, that, uh, uh, that actually is about law enforcement and less about killing... Well, it's about protecting rich people's stuff. And that's not going to come from trying to reform this already fucked up, broken system that doesn't give a shit. Let's look at the comments. Aiden. Uh, there's no way she thought it was a taser, especially with that much experience on the job. Wear a tool belt to, to, well, to work every day. And you know where your fucking hammer is. Exactly. Exactly. There's there's no way that you didn't know. You reach for that gun. And even if it was autonomic, that just shows you systemic racism. And that just shows you uh, how biased the police training is. Cops are trained to think that everybody outside the police force is against them. That you are the enemy. That's what they're trained to think. And that's how they react. The It's provable. You, you're seeing the videos. Do, do, do. All right, I gotta scroll up for the Rockfin comments. Uh, here we go. Zozovic says uh, they they said that the shots fired locators, whatever they're called, brought the police to the scene in the first place. Uh, said like six shots fired. Sounds like what I could be reading was all wrong. I didn't see any gun in his hands. Uh, it, it's okay. The reporter has brownish skin. Yeah, we're supposed to. Yeah, the the NBC reporter did have brownish skin. And Lester Holt, he was saying, you know, that measured Lester Holt tone. Um, yeah. So from what I've read, it seems like he was playing with airsoft guns, and that's what the pops were. Um, but again, it doesn't. It wouldn't matter because at when he was being chased down. Hands up. No gun in his hand. He complied with the officer and was shot regardless. Now, the other cat was arrested for endangering a minor. But who, who's the one that was really endangering the minor? It was the fucking cop that had the gun pointed to the 13-year-old. Uh, it's pretty sick that they go this far as... They go so far as lifting the bridges. Yeah. Uh, it's like locking the population in their own rooms for bad behavior. Well, it's not even for bad behavior. It's for it's 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 for not disobeying the way that they want you to disobey. Like like when your uh, when your parents we're watching the Goldbergs right now, and it's funny. It's like there are certain scenes where it's like I want you to be a, a rebel, but I want you to be a rebel in this way, and it's like that's not what the point of fucking being a rebel. Is. <laughs> um. This is what goes on to say. Remember the footage on YouTube where gangs of police slash military were going up and down the streets and they shot at people standing on porches? Yes, I do. I did not forget that. <laughs> uh, they claimed it was non-lethal rounds. Yeah, but they were shooting people's windows. And yeah, and those those shots are only non-lethal when you fire them at the ground and it bounces off. When you fire it directly, it's a projectile. It can still pierce through. In fact, in France... Uh, during the Yellow Vest protest, there were like two journalists that were shot directly in the eye and lost their eye because that's how bad the, the damage was. Um, YouTube has probably purged 99% of it, uh, of it, leaving 1% to MSM narrative videos. Uh, the gun gun found at the scene, but he wasn't holding it. Yeah, so so it doesn't matter whether there was a gun found on the scene or not. If there was a gun found on the scene and it wasn't an airsoft gun, uh, then you arrest him for possession. Right? That's kind of what you're supposed to do. Why would you need to shoot him when he didn't, when he wasn't armed? Unless you have biased training that treats, treat, teaches you to shoot first and ask questions later, especially if that suspect is black or brown. So again, if I mean, if these cops aren't found guilty, there is going to be or there this summer is going to be a lot more intense than last summer, and you know, 
for for people that are going to be like, oh man, I wish it would just go back to being quiet. Well, it's not. The the Pandora's box is open. So the days of 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 complacency and for you to talk about cat videos and all that kind of it's over. It's over. Sorry, but this wasn't caused by us. It was caused by killer cops and the politicians that lie for them and the judges that allow them to continue going free and a criminal justice system that doesn't give a shit about justice. Uh, Zuzubix, thank you for the tip. Really appreciate that. All, all of these uh, very much still help. Uh, I'm going to look at Jay Jackson's comments, and then we will start wrapping things up here. Uh, there again, though, the actions where the public pushes back against Killer Cop require enough citizens willing to to do them. And unfortunately, I don't believe we're at a critical mass needed to make that needed to make that happen. Uh, there are still far too many Blue Lives Matter assholes justifying this shit. Well, they should read a Punisher comic, Jay, because the Punisher kills corrupt killer cops. That's what he does. <laughs> Their stupid Blue Lives Matter logo is wrong, and it and it is it is using the logo incorrectly, and it's very upsetting. Um, I I I think you are probably correct in that sense uh, that we don't have enough of a groundswell, but we're building. Um, what's happening in Minneapolis is is kind of a resurgence of it, and we're all exhausted from it. But you know, I I will say if there are marches in the city of Pittsburgh. I will probably do my best to fucking go down there or at least amplify their voices. So we might not, we might not be able to, there are people that might not be directly able to go to the protests, but there are other roles to fill in direct action uh, that aren't putting your body on the line and being the, being, you know, uh, at the marches and all of that stuff. That's, that is still very important, but so is amplifying voices. And so is taking care of people you know, like if you know somebody that went to the protest, fuck it, get them some soup, make sure that they have some bandages, make sure that, you know, it's like, hey, get to, here, take some extra, uh, you know, bottles of water for any sort of tear gas incident, so on and so forth. So there's a lot that we can do. Um, as, as far as critical mass, I think we're getting closer to it. I think it's starting to become unavoidable. Uh, so I'm hoping the more coverage stories like this get... And the more we can kind of look at the media, like corporate media specifically, and learn to kind of read through their bullshit, we might have a chance. You know, there we might have a chance for people to go, all right, I'm not listening to Lester Holt gaslight, just like Eric Nelson gaslight the American people about George Floyd and the and the bystanders. Um, you know, so. It is that's that's part of the reason why I'm trying to include more like, you know, how the media is manipulating the narrative kind of coverage of, of some of these stories, because that is important to, to know um, and debunk a lot of the, the 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 crap. The the Blue Lives Matter people are are the well, I'll, I'll say this, the hardcore Blue Lives Matter people. There's also the Blue Lives Matter literal liberals that are like, well, we need the cops. Well, we need somebody to do this. Right. Those people I think you can talk to. The hardcore, like, there are people that leave comments on these videos on YouTube. I, I read one the other day. But those folks, they're too in with their with their belief system. And the only way to really jar them out is, is if the cops attack them. And then they'll be like, oh, man, you know, like that. So it has to be experiential for them. Because they don't care about anything outside their own individual family purview, I guess would be something that you, it would be what you could call it there. Um, but those are going to be harder to get to. But the, but the Blue Lives Matter liberals that are out there, um, you know, the the libertarians, I you you can get them to join in on that movement. Uh, just average workaday people, you know, that are going home to listen to the news. You can get them to join in to the cause, primarily by breaking down the news that they watch and pointing out the the fallacies and you know the the rhetoric they use. And once you once you kind of put that out there for people, it becomes really impossible for them not to see it. 
it becomes really impossible for them not to see it. So you, all you have to do is get them to see it. Take the blinders off. To those people, I think you can. To the people that leave shitty racist comments, like like one person literally was asking me, like, uh, like they were dead set on the fact that Floyd died of drugs, and they were asking me, like, why don't I go fix stuff in India? It's like shit like that, where they completely ignore the systemic problems within America. Um, those folks... It's not impossible, but there's like a 1% chance that they'll change what they believe in. Um, you can still try, and and I usually do. That's my first instinct is to, is to try, but it's way fucking harder. Way fucking harder. Um, Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.